I'm Dr. Rachel Rubin, a urologist fellowship trained in sexual medicine for all genders. When I went to med school, we were taught to take a sexual history. Do you smoke? Do you drink? Do you do drugs? Do you have sex? Men, women, or both? And that was it. So what we're telling patients is that sex is a vice, something that is dangerous and that you should feel bad about. But sex is how we're all here and how we even continue as a species. So we must get comfortable as doctors talking to our patients about sexual medicine. What if we move away from sex as being in the vice category, the part of the social history that's the bad stuff you shouldn't be doing? Maybe we bring it into the review of systems. So at a very basic first step, I like to ask patients four things. Really, as a sexual medicine doctor, I do four things. I deal with issues of libido, arousal, orgasm, and pain. Why is this important? Well, let's go through it. Libido. These are the things our patients really care about. 2.3 for every thousand people got divorced in 2021. Do you know that women who have distressing low sexual desire, they have about on average sex two and a half times per month. We call this mercy sex or duty sex. Uh, I don't know what the half time per month looks like, but people genuinely care about desire and their doctors don't really know that we have a biopsychosocial toolbox to help our patients. Let me give you an example, right? Antidepressants we know can cause sexual side effects. So could there be medications in our toolbox that can help our patients? Of course there can, and there are. What about education? What about talk therapy? We should be asking our patients about what they care about and why they care about it so we can help them achieve their quality of life goals. What about arousal? Did you know that erections are a marker for cardiovascular disease in men? We know this to be true for men, and I'm certain the research would be no different for women. We know that there are many biological causes for decrease in arousal, ranging from sleep apnea, diabetes, hypertension, and smoking. Did you know I can convince a lot of men to quit smoking because I tell them it's bad for their penis? We have to be understanding what our patients care about and then advising them on why we think we can help improve these issues. How about orgasm? Have you ever been asked if you can orgasm? Have you ever been asked if, asked if you have questions about orgasm? 15 to 20% of women report having an orgasm disorder, and we rarely talk about this in an exam room. I've certainly never been asked, and everybody knows what I do for a living, not to mention all the many men that I see and that my colleagues see who have really distressing premature ejaculation or delayed orgasm. This is pathophysiology at its finest and most complex. It is so interesting, and we have so much to learn and understand about orgasm in general. And finally, pain. This seems obvious that we should be asking our patients about their pain, which includes pelvic pain, but oftentimes we avoid talking about private parts. Pain affects not just our patients, but their partners, often their families. When our patients can't sit, they can't wear tight pants, they can't go and do their daily activities that bring them joy uh, and belonging. And so we have to really work with our toolbox in a biopsychosocial manner to help our patients. And often I am using the incredible rehabilitation rehabilitation specialist called pelvic floor physical therapist. And so again, re remember, we're talking about libido, arousal, orgasm, and pain. Sex is important to us as a species. It's important to our patients. Please consider enhancing your sexual history taking skills and ask patients about their desire, arousal, orgasm, and pain. Ask non-judgmental and open-ended questions you actually may be the only doctor to ever do so. I'm Dr. Rachel Rubin. I am a urologist and sexual medicine specialist. And please follow along as we start to explore the evolving and growing field of sexual medicine.